selectable time interrupt. There is not an instruction that is labeled STI. STI is a feature called selectable time interrupt. You can select the time period where the program is interrupted to run the STI or the interrupt file. Now, for the MicroLogics, especially the 10-point MicroLogics 1000 that you're probably using with this lab book, not only are the data files pre-declared, they're also pre-expanded to their maximum size. Also, ladder 5 is labeled STI underscore INT, selectable time interrupt, interrupt routine. This is the only location that you can place logic that you would like to execute on a periodic basis determined by the value that you put into the register S2 colon 30, which is the set point or the preset value for that timer. So there are four instructions, if you will. One of them is really a label. The INT is a label. STE, STI enable, STS, STI start immediately, and STD, the STI disable. Okay, in your lab, in ladder two, I had you put the logic you see here, which is basically a free running timer that is running with a time base of one hundredth of a second, point zero one, a preset of one hundred. Whenever the preset equals the accumulate, which is one hundred, the timer is done, the run goes false for one scan, and the very next scan it's reset and it continues for another hundred hundredths of a second. So it's continually cycling with a preset of zero through a hundred, zero through a hundred, zero through a hundred. This gives us a value in the accumulate register for T4 colon zero. Gives us a value that's continually changing by one hundredths of a second for one hundred, one hundredths of a second, then it resets and starts over again. So it gives us a dynamic changing value to work with to look at the effect on an STI or yes on the interrupt routine when you alter the value of the timer based on what's in the routine. You'll see. Okay if you open up S2 status data file you don't see much there. Now in some of the other processors there's more to work with but in this one you have a pending bit an enable bit, executing bit, loss bit, and then the set point for the timer for the STI. The enable bits what gets set first in order to enable the selectable time interrupt. While it's enabled and running the executing bit changes to a state of one. If for some reason that you disable the interrupt or you're not finished executing the code before the interrupt timer times out, the pending bit, pending bit will get set. And if the pending bit is set to one and you try to start another interrupt, you'll set the lost bit. Now you're not going to remember all this just from this one lab. You need to go to the manual and look at the information over and over again until you've absorbed it. And then, of course, there's the set point. In this case, it's set for 100, which would be 100 times 10 milliseconds, which would be one second. So right now, it's set for every one second. Now, that doesn't mean that's where we want you to set it in the lab. I'm just describing what the set point means. So it's in 10 millisecond units. So if you set it to 1, then the STI would want to run every 10 milliseconds. So the whole idea is to be able to execute a chunk of code, a group of file, ladder logic rungs, every periodic interval. So right now, every one second, the STI would be enabled and run for one second.
So in your lab though, I have you use an input, input zero, to enable the selectable timed interrupt. And the code that's in ladder five, there's an interrupt label, then there's a limit test that looks at T4 colon zero, accumulate, when it's between 0 and 25, it turns on output 0. When it's between 25 and 50, it turns on output 1, as was captured here in the screen capture. Right now, the accumulate is 56. Um, actually, that's interesting. Uh, it's not between 25 and 50, and yet output 1 is on. That's because when I did this screen capture, the interrupt was disabled. I had left ladder 5 in this state but the timer keeps on running. The timer is in ladder two, not in ladder five. That's another interesting thing to make note of. T4 colon zero runs continuously in ladder two. Ladder five only gets executed when the selectable time interrupt is enabled. So if I disabled it, when we'll say it was at 30, well, output one would be on but T4 colon zero dot ACC would keep accumulating because you're displaying the value in the timer register and the timer itself, the timer instruction, is in ladder two. Once you had all your logic entered for this lab, we had you check to see if all of your output LEDs were off. If they were not, you needed to open the output data file, zero, turn them off. Then we had you lock S2 on top and select the STI tab. And the set point should be at zero. Uh, input zero should be off, input one should be on. And at this point, the STI was doubly disabled because S 2 slash 1 is set to 0 and you have a value of 0 in the timer preset for the select time to interrupt timer. Now a little typo on the slide here it says S2 colon 0 slash 1 that should say S colon 2 slash 1. Also we had you directly type values into S30 for your uh, STI timer preset value. Okay. Now, you were watching the enable bit, and I had you switch on input zero, and nothing happens. Then I had you switch it back off and enter a set value, a set point value of 10 and S30. Did any of the output LEDs illuminate? No. You're disabled now, so you change the set point to 10, but it's still disabled. Then we have you switch input zero on again, which enables it. Did any of the output LEDs illuminate? Yes. If any illuminate, are they staying on or were they cycling? They were cycling. Were they cycling in a pattern or random? Yes, in a pattern. Now we had you uh, switch input zero off. Are any LEDs illuminated? Yes. If there are any illuminated, are they staying on steady or cycling? They're just staying on steady. In a pattern? Not really. It's static. Because you stopped executing ladder 5 when you disabled or removed the enable off of the STI. So whatever pattern was left, it's there. You're no longer executing that logic, so you're not executing the false state or the true state of any of those wrongs. Okay, now. I want you to switch input zero back on and increase S30 to 20. Did any of the output LEDs illuminate? Of course they did. If any illuminate, are they staying on steady or are they cycling? They're cycling. In a pattern? Yes. However, the patterns changed. Did the pattern or speed of cycling change between 10 and 20 times 10 milliseconds? In other words, when you doubled the interval, the length of the interval, did the pattern or speed of cycling change? Yes. If so, was it faster or slower? Well, in this case, going from 10 to 20, it, you might not be able to decide whether it's faster or slower. However, if you watch closely, it definitely isn't faster. It's actually a little slower. 
it kind of um, goes the same rate and then the last two it's, it's, it's slower. Also depending on what demo you're using if you have relay outputs the clicking of the outputs may throw you off but it was slower. Then we had you increase S30 to 50 which means every half a second or 50 times 10 milliseconds that's 500 milliseconds you're executing the logic. Are any of the output LEDs illuminated? Yes. If any are illuminated, are they staying on steady or cycling? They're cycling in a pattern? Yes. Did the pattern or speed of cycling change when you went from 20 to 50? Yes. If so, is the pattern or the speed or the cycling faster or slower? It's slower. We ask you a question at this point. Examine all four rungs very closely. Should they all be going true in sequence? Yes, they should. Now reduce the value in S30 back to 10 when you had a nice even pattern and observe the rungs. Are they going true in sequence now? Yes, keep in mind it's how often that you are executing the STI that's going to determine the behavior of this logic. Increase S30 to 100. Are any output LEDs illuminated? Yes. If any are illuminated, are they staying on or cycling? They're just staying on. In a pattern? Not really. Did the pattern or speed of cycling change between 10 and 100 units of 10 milliseconds? Yes. If so, faster or slower? Slower or stopped. Now keep in mind if you're asking the processor to execute this logic every 10 times 10 or every 100 milliseconds 100 milliseconds is one hundredth of a second. Now remember the timer T40 is counting units of time of one hundredth of a second or 100 milliseconds. So it's going to update the accumulate every 100 milliseconds. So if you're executing this logic every 100 milliseconds, or I should say, which would be 10, because remember it's 10 times 10. When you increase to 100, that's every one second or 100 times 10, 1,000 milliseconds. So if you're going to execute this logic every one hundredth of a second or every 10 milliseconds or in this case every 100 milliseconds you're going to catch all the updates that accumulate and it's going to behave normal but when you step up to 50 you're executing you're going and running this logic every 50 milliseconds I'm sorry 50 times 10 500 milliseconds so you're catching this logic when the timer is halfway through its accumulate increase from 0 to 100. So it looks erratic. If you go all the way up to 100, then you're only executing this logic once during the whole cycle of 0 to 100 counts in the accumulate of the timer. If you think about it, you'll catch on. So the idea of using a timer that's set to a time base of 100th of a second and then which is 100th of a second and a unit of 10 for your timer that's every 100 milliseconds you're going to catch it in all four true states for this limit instruction but as you start increasing the length of time between when it's executed you're not going to catch it at the same you're not going to catch it at an interval where you can equally see output 0, output 1, output 2, output 3 you're going to catch it at different points and it's not going to look the same. So this lab was designed to show you the relationship between the logic that you're running in the selectable time interrupt and its relationship to logic outside the STI. So you don't want to have a preset for the timer for the STI that doesn't allow for proper execution of the logic that's in the STI.
Okay, the STS instruction, Selectable Timed Start instruction, is predominantly used to transfer, to, is to start the STI sequence to enable, but to transfer a different time into the timer, the STI timer. Could the period of an interrupt be changed from an OIT, for like a panel view? Yes. Why would changing the timer period that determines how often the logic in ladder 5 is scanned affect which rungs go true? Well, um, let's say if the timer T40 were to be relocated in ladder, from ladder 2 into ladder 5, would that change the behavior? Absolutely. How? At a set point of 10, the TON executed often enough to appear semi-normal and at a set point of 100, the TON never executes. Now remember, right now, the TON instruction is in ladder 2, so it executes continuously. But if you were to move the TON instruction that's instructing T40 into ladder 5, then the timer update, the timer instruction is only going to execute on the selectable time interrupt. It's going to be very erratic, bad thing to do. Move the TON rung of logic from ladder 2 to ladder 5. Exercise the logic. Does it work? Yep. Why? The accumulate updates with the execution of the subroutine. So depending on how often you are running the STI, it will determine whether it works properly with the timer in there or not. I would not put the timer instruction inside of the STI. This finishes the commentary on the Advanced One Lab exercise book. And I hope you had a, an excellent educational experience <coughs> and that you enjoyed the Advanced One manual as well. Uh, if you want to continue on, there is an Advanced Two manual. If you don't already have it, you can get it at the PLC Professor website. So I thank you for your participation and use of the materials.